Merry Christmas. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. A special welcome to visitors. We're always happy to have visitors here at St. Mark's, and we hope that you can make yourself at home. We invite everyone who would like to to find a welcome card. You'll find those in the pew racks ahead of you, and we invite you to take a moment and fill that out. You can fill that out with information about how we can contact you, or you can fill that out with any prayer requests or messages you would like to give to me or the office, and we will pray for you by name following the service. Those of you who are worshiping with us at home, we are so very glad that you are here with us today. We invite you to have bread or wine, grape juice, crackers with you so that you can participate in Holy Communion with us this Sunday and every Sunday. So good to have you here. And we thank you all for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. We continue with our mission statement, the statement that has guided us through many years and will continue to guide us into 2022. Let's say this together with resolve, celebrating God's love and forgiveness. We serve others. Wonderful. Well, we continue to celebrate Christmas. Christmas goes all the way till Epiphany. You know that, right? The 12 days of Christmas. So we are in the, we've just begun the celebration of Christmas. And I realize we don't have light the Advent candle in here. So do we have our candle lighter? He's ready to go. And if you would please write, uh, light the candle as we have today, a celebration of more Christmas carols that we couldn't fit in on Christmas Eve. Um, and we will sing together. Uh, from heaven above, verses, three verses, we invite you to stand, four verses, please, invite you to stand, please, as you are able. you to remain standing as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who has made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have put one in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace that all we do, in word or deed, 
may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us. In the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord, in Christ your sins are forgiven and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we have a couple of kids here, so I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind coming forward. Would you be open to doing that for our children's message? Would you? That'd be great. I'm going to lead the children's message today. Can you hear me through my mask? We're going to take Omicron very seriously. So if you just sit, guys, maybe over here on the ground, or you can bring the chairs up. Is that good? So I just wanted to show you a couple of things. Now, we have a Christmas tree here, right? Do you see the Christmas tree? But I wonder if you recognize those ornaments. Do you know those ornaments? Do you? I bet most people don't. We don't have it full of red balls or Santa Clauses, right? They're kind of different. So I was wondering maybe if you wanted to come up and point to one of these symbols on the tree and I'll tell you what it means. Would you like to do that? You can play stump the pastor on this one. Would you do it first for us, David? Yeah. All right. So anyone that you don't know about, and let me see if I know the answer. Okay, great. Okay, so he chose one, which is a cross. This is beautiful. These are made by people in the congregation. Am I right? Yes, they are absolutely beautiful. The cross, and it's over a kind of a strange-looking ball. So normally, this would be something you'd even see maybe in a pope's hand, definitely in icons, and that is the world with the cross on top of it. So it's a symbol of Christ being the king or over all of the world. And you'll see that in Eastern Orthodox and in, in um, Western traditions. Okay. All right. Can you want to come up and point to one and I'll tell you what it means? Would you do that for us? It's kind of our one time of year. And if anyone out there is dying to, oh, I'm going to make you come up and point. And then I'll try to tell you what it means. Any of those you wish you knew what it meant, and I'll tell you. If I, if I get stumped, I'll have to say I don't know. That's okay, though, too. What do you think? Which one do you think is really pretty? And you just say, what does that mean? Why do they have that on here? What do you think? Anyone, just point to one. OK, great, wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, to me, it looks like, oh, it has all sorts of strange letters on it. I don't want to hurt it. So it has a lot of letters on there. And each of those is a symbol for the name of Jesus in Greek. We have a. X and a C, and that would be for Christ. We have another one, IHC, which is the name, I believe that's what we'd see in that, that fish symbol with the ichthus, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, which spells in Greek, fish. We have some other ones on here. We have, anyway, that's the cross, and the X also is the first letter in the name of Jesus Christ in Greek. So that's a great one. Excellent, thank you. Do you have a question? Which one do you think? Oh, the rose, the rose. Now that one is a lot more modern. We could say that's the rose of Sharon, right? So it's an Old Testament prophecy about Jesus. But sometimes we see a really important rose in our own Lutheran tradition. We call that the Luther rose. And that was Luther's family symbol, which he kind of changed to be all about Jesus. The white purity of Jesus, and at the very center, he normally would have a cross because the cross is the center of everything we do. Jesus Christ and what Jesus did for us is what the center of everything we do. That's why we have that huge cross up there. And on the outside of the church, if you look up, you see a great big cross from the outside too. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Did we answer some of them? Yeah. Which one do you like? You like that one. Now, that's a great one as well. It's got roses all over it. It's the symbol of the circle. The circle, especially a golden circle, is eternity, how God never, ever ends, and how God loves us. And then again, we have that X in the center, which in Greek is the first letter of Jesus' name, Christ. Yeah, good. Thank you, guys. Now, we can maybe cover this, and if I don't do them all today, then we'll have lots of children's sermons for next Christmas. So thank you so much for coming up. We really appreciate it. And um, if Miss Melissa's here, if needed. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, guys. Reading from Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let us let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Fire goes before the Lord burning up enemies on every side. Mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. For you are the Lord, most high, over all earth. You are exalted for far above all gods. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Readings from Hebrews 1, 1 through 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he he also credited worlds. He is a reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What what came into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Well, today, December 26th, Even though we are clearly in the season of Christmas, I don't know about you, but I have not touched a single ornament uh, or taken anything down in my house. In fact, I have uh, family all over and sleeping in the living room, et cetera. So we are gonna keep on celebrating Christmas for a while, I think, which is appropriate. There are 12 days of Christmas. This is not a minor thing. This is a time of celebration which thank goodness also comes at the longest, darkest, coldest time of the year, even here in Southern California. So we are not finished with this season. So we borrowed, instead of moving forward with the liturgical year, we borrowed Christmas Day uh, texts, and we will continue to do some Christmas music today. This prologue of John, I don't know about you, but it's one of my favorite pieces of scripture. It is poetry. It is pure poetry and full of the mystery of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful God we have who came to be among us, something we celebrate every day of the year. But it's always fascinating to see just how extensive the history of of our Christmas traditions are, how many people have been deeply, deeply affected by what Christ has done. And together, throughout all of the centuries and throughout all the world, we take time to ponder the mystery of the incarnation, which is the God becoming a human flesh. And so today, rather than rush past the season or miss some of the wealth and the richness of this season, we're going to take some time to let you know more about some of the Christmas carols that perhaps you know, perhaps are new to you, but are definitely a part of our Lutheran tradition, our Christian tradition. So the first one is the one we sang beforehand. I don't know how familiar you were with how, um, Aloha, a rose air blooming. No, we're going to go back before we go to that one. The one we did uh, before, no worries, um, was From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. And it was actually written by, can you guess it, who wrote From Heaven Above to Earth I Come? Anyone with a German background might be more familiar with it. I'm going to say this incorrectly. I'm sure we have a German in our midst, so please forgive me if I get this wrong. From Himmelhoch, da komm ich hier. Good. Excellent, thank you. Written by Martin Luther in the year 1534. And the, the story behind it is not only did he write the words to this hymn, but he also wrote the original melody, which I believe had changed, or maybe, um, maybe we did sing it in his original, I'm not sure. What we did not do for you today is have you read all fi- sing all 15 stanzas. Thank you very much, and you're welcome, yes. So today, instead, we simply sang verses 1, 2, 3, and 14. This is Luther's interpretation of Luke chapter 2, which we read a Christmas Eve service. The first five stanzas of this hymn announce the, uh, the, is the announcement to the shepherds, and the following are the invitation to follow the shepherds to the manger and celebrate the newborn baby. And the last stanza, which we did sing, is a short doxology, which mentions the new year with hopes and wishes and prayers for peace in the new time to come. So perhaps we'll try that one again next season. Uh, The one we're about to sing is called Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. And this is another ancient one. It comes from the late 1500s. And the words for this hymn were found deep buried down in a monastery in Trier, Germany. 
Now, why a rose? We have the rose up here. Perhaps this is where we get the idea of the rose at Christmas. It's always supposed to be a white rose. But the theory or the story behind it is that on Christmas Eve, many, many years ago, a monk found a blooming rose while walking in the woods. On Christmas Eve, it was such a surprise that he thought it was a, a, a sign of God coming to him. He took that rose and he laid it down in front of a statue of the Virgin Mary. So perhaps originally the idea of the rose was to be that of Mary. We don't know. The hymn is just that old. But later on, the Protestants came and they altered it a little bit so that it was not about Mary but about Jesus, basing it on Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad and the desert will rejoice and blossom as the rose. Either way, the rose has the symbol of the rose at Christmas has an amazing resilience over all the centuries and is a song that we have been singing for hundreds of years. So now we invite you to sing with us, Lo, how a rose air blooming. The next song, "'Twas in the Moon of Wintertime," is probably the earliest Christmas carol composed in North America. 
The words were originally composed by a 17th century French Jesuit missionary to the Huron Indians of what is now Canada. John de Brebeuf was a Jesuit priest from France born in 1593. He entered the ministry in 1617 and arrived in Quebec in 1625. Overcoming many obstacles, he spent the first long winter in a wigwam and set out in spring by canoe to Lake Huron, where he was left to minister alone after a fellow priest was recalled. His early efforts in evangelism were unsuccessful. Life was also complicated because the English and French were at war over this region. With many setbacks, he lived and worked among the Indians for 16 years. Brebeuf suffered hardships unimaginable to most present-day missionaries. In 1642, he was caught up in a war between the Iroquois and Huron tribes. Two fellow missionaries had been captured and killed. Brebeuf was sent to the region to attempt further contact with the Huron people. Though the Iroquois had made peace with the French, they continued to fight the Huron tribe. Between 1644 and 1647, Brebeuf's ministry among the Huron people saw thousands baptized and following the way of the black-robed priests. But the war with the Iroquois intensified. Being French, he could have escaped, but chose to remain with the Huron people. It was important to Brebeuf to not present Christ's birth as an event which happened far away and long ago, nor to linger on its details. What mattered to him is the immediacy of the incarnation and the difference it can make in the lives, not just of the Huron, but of believers in any culture. This humble Jesuit priest to New France is now the patron saint of Canada. Let us now sing, "'Twas in the Moon of Wintertime." Your King is born, Jesus. 
context of our next carol is What Child Is This? centers around the adoration of the shepherds who come to visit the baby Jesus in the manger. The lyrics are posed as a rhetorical question of what the shepherds might have been pondering in the very first encounter with Jesus. The composer of the lyrics, William Chatterson Dix, was a man who'd been afflicted by an unexpected and severe illness that resulted in him being bedridden and suffering from a severe depression. In his near-death experience, he had a spiritual renewal. And while he was recovering, he read the Bible comprehensively, cover to cover, and was inspired to author other hymns like Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, and As with Gladness, Men of Old. In the final stanza, the lyricist expands on the circle of those attending this humble scene, drawing from the gifts that were brought by the Magi, the three kings. We, the singers, we are invited to take our own place at the manger and bring the metaphorical gifts of incense, gold, and myrrh. Everyone, the rich and the poor, the humble, the proud, are invited to kneel before the Christ child and allow the Christ child to be enthroned in our hearts. This carol is even more cherished as it was set to the melody of Green Sleeves, one of the most popular, soulful, haunting, and beautiful melodies of its day. We sing together now, What Child Is This? What child is this who needs to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who mingles greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our king? No. 
the Bleak Midwinter, written by Christina Rossetti, is a beloved Christmas hymn. Rossetti authored three collections of mostly religious poetry and four devotional books. Her deep faith is thought to be partially the result of the solace that she found in writing as a result of her poor health from age 16. In the first memorable stanza, Rossetti creates a dreary and desolate image of the world into which the infant Jesus appeared. This was based on her own experience of the English winter, having left her country of origin, Italy, and finding the English weather to be quite brutal. She drew on a long established literary idea that there was snow at Christ's birth. In this poem, she expands on this idea, suggesting the incarnate one, the light of the world, brought warmth into the most forlorn and dreary of sinful situations. Rossetti invites us to ponder the paradox of Christ's birth, that the eternal one whom heaven could not hold nor earth sustain should appear in the bleak winter of human existence where a stable place sufficed. In the third verse, we are invited to give the greatest gift we can possibly give to this child. We give him our heart. Let us now sing in the bleak, bleak midwinter. song in this uh, walk through the centuries of Christmas hymns is of the Father's love begotten. It is perhaps the oldest of the Christmas hymns. The author is Aurelius Prudentius Clemens, born 348 AD. He was a Spanish lawyer turned poet, and he was considered the first great poet of the Latin church. But this fighting hymn and melody, this is considered a fighting hymn. 
because there was a great heresy going on at the church in the time. One of the predominant heresies was that Jesus was created by God the Father, not eternally with God the Father, not coexisting before the creation of time. So this this lawyer-turned-poet applied his legal skills to make the case for what is now our understanding of the Trinity, that the Son, Jesus Christ, has always, is always, and will always be with God the Father and the Spirit and us. To emphasize this point, the poet adds the repetition affirming three times the premise from the first line of the hymn, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the source and the ending of all the things that are, that have been, and that future years will see. To seal the argument, Prudentia sets forth that all the cosmos from heaven and earth gives witness to the co-eternal, co-equal nature of the sun. By the time this hymn comes to us in our hymnal, it has traveled an amazing journey through 17 centuries. This is a hymn for all times and all ages, and that one that will be sung evermore and evermore. I invite you now, if you are able to stand, plus I think it's getting a little chilly, perhaps standing will bring a little more warmth to us. And also want to remind anyone that we have some blankets in the back. If you need a lap blanket or something, the ushers will bring those for you. But let's stand and sing now the beautiful, most ancient hymn of the Father's Love Begotten. Concert ring. And 
Joining our voices with the heavenly host, the Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You come to us gathering your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they, weigh, they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of, your, of creation, that we live in service to you in, natural world, in the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us, you come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we may follow the Christ child and one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Vulnerable, O oh, merciful God. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds, an imprisoned Paul, and in prison, Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell or in need, or in any need this day, especially for Chris, Caden, Butch, Sharon, Denny, Ruby, Manuel, Cindy at the death of her father, and for the families of St. Mark's. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open your hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God. We pray especially for the Lutheran social services that they continue to help many and that those that they reach may be blessed. You come to us through those who have died yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, deacon, martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Merciful God. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For many people today, we invite you following today's service to uh, tie knots and pray for all of these receiving God's love. We pray for Blair today, for Elizabeth, for Sonia, for Marta, for Patty at the death of her son. For Dawn and for Sharon. We pray for Butch and we'll continue to pray for Butch and Eunice
pray for Romeo as we pray for all the families of St. Mark's. We pray for Jenny. We pray for Nicole. And we pray for Dawn. Emmanuel, God with us, we need you. We need your presence, we need your healing, we need your help. We need your comfort and your guidance. We pray now for all those receiving these quilts, that they will know your calm, your presence, your love, your healing, that they will know you. Be with us as we support them, as we love them. Guide us in this congregation that we may be a light, bringing other people to your glory. This we pray in Jesus' holy name, amen. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He is so good to me. And now we have the joy of receiving a new member this, this Sunday. We're so very, very glad that Christina Torres will be joining our membership. So I'm going to put my mask on and invite you forward. And if you have a bulletin with you, if you can borrow one from somebody, there we go. I'll invite you to simply stand up here. We want to make sure anyone worshiping at home also gets to see who you are. Good to see you, Christina. Welcome today. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sister in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, please respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Excellent. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for this new member in her life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome the sister in Christ into this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let me pray for you, please. We give you thanks for our new member, Christina, whom you have drawn to your, yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. Amen. Welcome. Good to have you here. Applause, applause. <laughs> Yay, it was easy. <laughs> You may know that Christina is also our bookkeeper, and she is one of our bell ringers. She brings her niece and her nephew to, to play bells, and so we're just so happy to get to know Christina and her family. Thank you for being here, family, better, and we are very, very, very happy about this. The peace of Christ be with you always. We invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you safely. Thank you for always do that. Wonderful. Those of you at home, we invite you to share the peace with anyone that might be, I guess I can take this off now. We invite you to share the peace with anyone who may be around you, or you may put your peace in the, the comment section below. Of course, we just always raise our hand in the direction of someone who needs God's peace and bless them. Wonderful. We continue with our offering. Oops, sorry there, guys. Um, we give you thanks for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. We thank you for giving any way that you choose to give, which is either sending or bringing in your offering, or you may um, 
work this out electronically with your bank, or you, of course, can free to use our Venmo, which is at St. Mark's Church Chula Vista. Any way you choose to give, we are partners in ministry, and we know God is doing great things here at St. Mark's. And I think, open the back door. Good. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew us in us the song of your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Sorry about that, Jason. <laughs> to the Lord it is truly right and proper at all times and places to give thanks to you O Lord Holy Father Almighty ever God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you now, if you're communing here, you may be seated, it's a little easier that way, to open up those cups. If you're communing at home, you may commune those around you, or you may commune with us with these words, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us. In these gifts of bread and wine, as we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with you too. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, good morning. I have a couple of announcements this morning. The first one is, we're sad to say, as Pastor Carla referred to, um, Cindy Diaz, our office manager's father, passed away uh, this week suddenly in Mexico. As a result, our office will be closed this week uh, while Pastor Carla is on vacation as well. So if you have a need, though, an emergency need, um, please contact Pastor Alicia, Pastor Alicia, will be on call. Pastor Carla will be back next Sunday in service, but we just wanted you to know she will be on vacation and Cindy is out as well. So uh, Saturday, January 1st, there is no church um, cleanup work party. We're all going to be celebrating the new year. On Sunday, um, I'm sorry, on Monday, January 3rd, end of ministry reports are due to the office, please. Tuesday, January 4th, Bible study on, th on Tuesday afternoon at 3 will resume. There will be no Bible study this week. And Saturday, January 8th, it is not in the, in the calendar, but January 8th will be our property cleanup for January, so if you'd like to come help with that. And Jan Sunday, January 9th, uh, Chula Vista Council Member Jail Galvez of uh, District 2 Northwest will be speaking or coming to visit with us and talk about free door-to-door -door electric shuttle services transportation for all seniors 55 and above in Northwest Chula Vista, which is where we are in Chula Vista. And that uh, 
uh, January 9th, also Sunday school and confirmation will resume. Now, I, as you may know, uh, both Dave and I volunteer at Sharp Chula Vista Hospital. And uh, this week we received, on Friday, we received uh, new COVID guidelines for the hospital and we've shared those with Pastor Carla and Pastor Alicia as well. And I'm gonna read a little piece of this for you. Um, because of the steady increase in our COVID-19 inpatient census in our hospitals, that's the Sharp Healthcare System, as well as increased positivity rates being seen in our medical centers, Sharp is, in, is transitioning from the substantial tier to the widespread tier as outlined in our infectious disease expansion, expansion retraction guide. The widespread tier marks our highest level of activation and calls for the corporate clinic and hospital command centers to be activated. Other key changes to note in this new tier are, uh, let's see, uh, policies which re uh, remain to design to keep patients, visitors, and staff members safe are in alignment with the guidance of the California Department of Public Health, as well as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Indoors, social, in-person gatherings, and other in-person gatherings are not permitted. Gatherings should only be done virtually. Outdoors, in-person gatherings are discouraged, and eating and drinking are not permitted. So in alignment with that and the other guidelines from the Sharp Chula Vista Healthcare, we will not be providing um, food and coffee, either indoors or outdoors, until further notice. Um, but we're grateful for you to be here, and we will continue to meet in person until we move to another level. Uh, so I wanted to let you know what was happening, and I think I have two more pieces. Um, those of you who are able and would be willing to help between services, the, as you may have noticed, the tarps are down. You may have seen it in the newsletter. Uh, two weeks ago, they rolled that way. This week, they rolled this direction, and we took, finally just took the tarps off the um, canopies, uh, the canopies off the stands, and they are sitting wet in the old Sunday school classroom. We need to move them and l drape them over the tables in Jacobson Hall. We have three big tarps. So we probably, we could use eight, 10, 12 people to do that. Uh, each tarp takes several people to drape it over the tables. So we'll do that between services, immediately after this service. And then please make sure on your way out of church that you tie your prayers into the many quilts and prayer squares that we have today. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. We will continue to monitor, and as we get information from the county or the CDC, we will follow the guidelines. But we're very grateful for Sharp Chula Vista for giving us some guidelines now and keeping everyone safe. We invite everyone to stand as you are able for our sending song, Joy to the World. to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. And grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 